I hope you guys aren't watching these all on the same day because I am making them all on the same day and I think I'm going crazy, but I shall soldier on. We shall continue. Uh, exercise 1.5.2 kind of brings us back. So as always, try it. See if you got it right. Check back. Um, we are going to talk about the different types of wrong answers and what I like to do on tests. So definitely come back to here. Um, five, what sampling method is used? Now, this particular question should be cluster sample. I have a lot of students choose convenience and I see where you're headed with here. It's a lot easier to just go to one park. The reason why I say that this is a cluster sample over a convenience sample is that we did randomly select the park, right? And we have that, like, we talked to everyone at that park. So it would be convenient if we just, a convenient sample, if we just went to the closest national park, right? That would be a convenient sample because we went to the closest one. We chose it was convenient over randomly selecting something. In this case, we did do a random selection. Uh, it just is of one group. So that is our cluster sample. Uh, six, what can go wrong? Let's just go through each of these pieces, uh, each of these answer choices and kind of discuss what my favorite wrong answers are. Uh, a, bird watcher selected from a national park may create an unbiased sample. Ah! <laughs> the first of many times that I make my screen gigantic. You guys can look forward to that throughout the semester. All right. Um, here the issue is an unbiased sample, that would not be a problem. That would be something good, right? Biased sample would be the problem. So really this is a two letter issue. Uh, I just briefly put in an UN and unbiased instead of bias, and now it's not a problem. It's, it has nothing to do with it. So read very carefully. I have a lot of students who just read quickly and miss out on these little tiny things that I do that can catch them up. Um, one way to make sure you don't do something like that is to read every answer choice because then when you find two right answers, you realize that you just misread one of them. Uh, B, the chosen national park may not accurately represent all national parks. That sounds pretty damn good. That sounds like our sample is not representative of our population. I'm loving B, but like I said, you should read everything just because. Who knows? C, the national park is selected at random. The data is therefore highly unreliable. Random is good. This just misstates a fact. If something is selected randomly, that actually helps us with reliability and representativeness. So C is wrong, it misstates that. And D, the sample size may be too large, which makes reading the data difficult. Yes, large data sets would make reading the data potentially difficult. However, we talked to 23 bird watchers. There is zero chance that this is too large. And also, we live in the day and age of big data. So even if we weren't just talking to 23 bird watchers, if I talked to 2,300 bird watchers, it would not make reading the data difficult. That's what a computer is for. So D is also bananas, and our correct answer is B. So misstating facts, just throwing in like a tiny knot or something to make a statement untrue. Those are things that I do all the time. I have a lot of students that'll just say, I understood the statistics, I just didn't take my time reading the question. So don't be one of those students on the exam. Uh, one way to keep yourself from doing that is just give yourself a little like, like write down your reasoning for each thing as you're going. Um, also, I don't do Scantron, so even things that are multiple choice, I hand grade, and if you have right nice wording and stuff that helps me understand what your thought process was, I might give you partial credit. Um, uh, usually if people actually do that, they get the question right, and it'll have to give them partial credit, but just throwing it out there as a incentive.